good morning one and all my name is dr r j s kimaresh and i am from vishakhapatnam andhra pradesh i am a dentist and practicing here currently in vaisal so today i am going to speak about a recently published review article of mine dentist stem cells and the importance in their uh, regenerative medicine technologies so coming to what are stem cells so stem cells are nothing but their multiplied cells they are harvested from our bodies and which can be wonders to our body So I am going to start with abstract. There are very very applications in regenerative medicine. They are kind, they are uh, form of viral crash cells, and they have some the embryogenesis process. They have a uh, various functions like uh, multiple multipotency, immunal moderator functions, and uh, cell renewal capacity. So they can be they can uh, differentiate into various types of lipocytes. neural cells thrombocytes rbc etc they can they are helpful in patients who lack the like uh, rbc count in parkinsons and in, uh, in various in uh, also in the oral cancer treatment so c- coming to introduction they they are derived from the neural neural crest cells mscs and oral derived epithelial cells so they were uh, the the stem cells were first uh, extracted by dr grontos in 2000 he is the one who told that they can come out in uh, they can be used in the regenerative processes the dental stem cells all of us have the the, the, the wisdom tooth commonly know, known as the third molars many of us get it extracted because of the our jaw lines the jaw lines do not provide adequate space for the adequate space for the third molar so they get it extracted so after getting it extracted sorry prior getting it extracted the stem cells can be harvested from those and they can get and then the teeth can be taken out so that the stem cells can be used for various other purposes so coming to the properties of stem cells number 1 multipotency multipotency is the property in which uh, they can uh, do various functions like uh, like they can uh, differentiate adipocytes they can form into bone cells they can they can uh, act in the liver etc in the brain so next is the high proliferation activity they these stem cells are not limited like uh, to a certain amount they can extend themselves they can proliferate themselves and the self renewal capacity over even the stem cells get uh, some of the day some of the stem cells get uh, day the other stem cells can renew themselves that means they can self renew it and then coming to the cornea forming unit fibroblast activity the fibroblast are uh, very important in our clotting process and these stem cells can um, c- convert uh, cells into the fibroblast and then immunomodulation immunomodulation is the most important of all as the immunity as the body's immunity is uh, is very helpful because uh, if the immunity is more the resistance of the body will be more here you can see the properties in the chart the water water kinds are put here the multi differentiated they can go into odontoblast bone forming cells osteoblast chondrocytes adipocytes fat cells myocytes endothelial cells neural cells here in the t- tissue regeneration they are very, very helpful in the dentin pulp they are very helpful in the dentin pulp they are very they are uh, helpful in the bone formation they are helpful in the cartilage formation muscle skin brain heart and other intermediate parts etc so coming to the next coming to the root regeneration this cap is an remarkable cell migration activity it's this considered to involve root root growth in tooth development many of the oral teeth they do not have an apex the root apex count in some cases the root apex is incompletely formed so due to that uh, it can lead to uh, some after few years it can lead to some uh, to say the the biting force won't be better the biting force won't be good so to overcome this problems the root region there so 
stem cells are used in the um, root regeneration process and coming to the next to the central nervous system the central nervous system these stem cells as you seen earlier that the these stem cells can differentiate into the uh, neural pre precursor cells here i have mentioned it neural pre precursor cells the progenitor cells so these help in the formation of the neural cells the regeneration of the neural cells here i'm talking about the regeneration only the regeneration they don't form it they can regenerate it and coming to the stroke in stroke uh, the stroke is mainly caused due to the middle cerebral artery injuries in main cases so what so what they found is that the stem cells can be incorporated into the middle cerebral artery region then it can provide some recovery functional recovery is there functional recovery is there due to the differentiation of the dopaminergic receptor the dopamine receptors and next coming to the parkinson's parkinson's is a, it's a common disease we have seen in uh, elder patients in which the the neural matter gets destroyed so the the person cannot uh, speak properly and the involuntary movements of the hands will be there so what what they found is that uh, the transportation of the stem cells into this uh, mpdps mpdps so mpdps uh, called as 1 methyl 4 phenyl 1 to 3 t t hydroperidine so compound and due to this uh, when it's injected into that uh, the recovery is somewhat to 50% is seen in uh, mouses and this one is yet to test in the human trials are beginning in the human trials are at the initial stages so uh, in the coming in the coming years we may we may find a cure for the parkinsons using the stem cells and then c coming to the the periphery nerve injuries in the nerve injuries also the stem cells have been helpful in the helpful because they can um, repair the nerve endings the repair the nerve endings and the repair the repairing of nerve endings is up to 15 mm which i have uh, mentioned here which i mentioned here 15 mm so next coming to the bone diseases the bone diseases in the autoimmune diseases like uh, my ischemia gravis and uh, other like rheumatoid arthritis so the stem cells can be helpful and also in this uh, in oral lesions like uh, lupus skin diseases like lupus erythematosus lupus erythematosus it, it uh, affects our oral cavity and the orbital region and uh, systemic rule lupus erythematosus is an uh, other variation in which uh, it mainly occurs in the middle part of the face so these uh, and this uh, lupus erythematosus and this can progress into the bone so these stem cells can uh, improve the bone metabolism by increasing the bone metabolism it in turn increases the it increases the cardioblastic activity and also the stem cells can be helpful in uh, regulating our uh, inflammatory mediators like uh, tumor necrosis factors alpha factor beta factor then uh, interleukin factors so these factors are very important for our uh, what is it for our inflammatory inflammatory factors due to the inflammatory factors the the signs of inflammation can be seen if the if the, if the inflammatory factors aren't uh, present then uh, the signs of the inflammation won't be seen so these inflammatory factors are, are very helpful in uh, in uh, acting as a line of defense for a body so coming to the liver diseases the liver diseases uh, the stem cells can uh, prevent the liver fibrosis fibrosis in the liver this has been shown in the rats and uh, they 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 made some progress and we hope that they make progress in the coming days and coming to the muscular in the muscular dystrophies like um, myasthenia gravis and uh, autoimmune and some autoimmune disorders uh, muscle fibrosis so these stem cells uh, muscle sorry muscle dystrophy these stem cells can be used uh, in which they provide the myoblast the muscle forming cells and also in diabetes and coronary stroma in transplantation in diabetes uh, 
the doctor chantal is a thermostat that insulin the uh, insulin producing cells can be formed using the stem cells also in the corneal stomach transplantation they are used in the corneal transplantation because they help in the formation of the rod cells and the cone cells the formation of the cone cells and they also they can the stem cells can uh, differentiate into the stroma like corneal cells similar to the corneal tissue conclusion these stem cells uh, can be a major asset to the regenerative medicine as they have various types of uh, the various uh, properties like multipotency in the modulation in the modulation and the self regulatory capacity but uh, there are some a few flaws in, and a few flaws i mean everything comes with a flaw so uh, we are still working out for the still working for the flaws to overcome but uh, some studies have found out that the stem cells are uh, the stem cells are far more better than any any other treatments we used in our regenerative medicines and also this requires a long follow up the follow up is uh, nearly like uh, 7 to 8 year 8, 8 to 10 years follow up is there so the follow up is quite long i have put my lot of references on so this is a review article i will publish by me if any mistakes are there please kindly excuse me thank you